child sacrifice. Barbaric. Evil. Ancient. Modern. There's nothing new under the sun. Throughout history, children have been sacrificed to a variety of deities in attempts to gain favor or blessings. Aztecs cut their children's hearts out to appease the gods of rain and war. Incas sacrificed their children to the sun god so their crops would flourish. Canaanites sacrificed their infants to Moloch for prosperity. Drums were played loudly to drown out the baby's screams. Child sacrifice never stopped, and we still don't hear their screams. There's nothing new under the sun. We sacrifice our children today, not for rain or war victories, but for freedom or convenience. We sacrifice to gain favor in the workplace or for the blessings of money or fame. We sacrifice our babies on the altar of free sex. Child sacrifice is no longer a public event. It's done behind closed doors. Rather than a gory burning or bloody stabbing, it's become a neat, sterile, and clinical event. We don't throw our children into the fire or leave them to freeze to death. We starve our babies. We poison them. We rip off their arms and legs and crush their skulls. We call it choice. We call it empowerment. And our culture condones it. We celebrate it. We celebrate baby murder. We consider it vital to our existence. It's become a right. But nothing is different. There's nothing new under the sun. Innocent human beings are still being sacrificed for the selfish gains of those more powerful. Modern child sacrifice is thriving. We must end it. End abortion. So today we're going to be talking about abortion, a big heavy topic. A lot of people saying her body, her choice, and they don't even know what they're saying. And the sad thing about it is these baby Christians and these so-called Christians, they believe that abortion is okay. Now, I'm not here to bash on anybody. I know a lot of people have done this in ignorance. And I'm here just to show y'all today that if you're thinking about it, considering it, don't do it. If you know somebody that wants to do it, don't do it. The Lord says here, these six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren, a, and hands that shed innocent blood that's innocent blood that child that you abort out of the womb the lord hates that and it's real sad when you see people that say they are believers and they believe in this stuff so-called believers because a true believer is not going to believe in abortion like i said a lot of us has been there through ignorance and i'm just here to show y'all that it's not right and God does not go along with this. So if your pastor or anybody telling you that it's okay to do it, it's wrong. The world's going to be the world. The world's going to do whatever they want to do. But as a true believer and a Bible believer, I'm trying to tell y'all today that it is wrong. Oh, here's a good one. A woman has the right to abortion. Her body, her choice. That's a major lie. How many of you believe that lie, her body, her choice? Oh, good. Thank for the three artists one. Um, oh, in the back with the black arm. You believe that a woman has a right to abort, abort her baby? Is her body her choice? Yes. And why do you believe that? 
Because of what you said, it's her body, her choice. I can't hear you. Because of what you just said, her body, her choice. And you believe it is her body, her choice? Do I believe in what? Do you believe it's her body, her choice? Well, yes, because normally she's going to be the one uh, taking care of the baby. Amazing. So, yeah. Are you a Christian, right? Oh, please. <laughs> no, are you? That's <laughs> where the rabbit meet the road. And that's what they believe, my body, my choice. But if they only just pick up their Bible and read and see for themselves what the Bible actually says about this, about my body, my choice, maybe they might listen. But the key to end, if not all abortions, is this verse here. It says, flee fornication. If you stop having sex without being married, because the Bible calls that fornication, and fornicators will not enter the kingdom of God. You can get mad at me all you want, but God said you having sex before marriage, you ain't making it in. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So my body, my choice? No, your body don't belong to you. It belongs to God. And God paid that with a price by dying on the cross, sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you. So you are not your own. Black lives matter or just some black lives? The black lives killed by black men matter, right? Yes? The black babies killed in the abortions clinics matter, right? Thought so. The black, the black officers killed by that bastard in, in Minnesota, that matters too, right? Okay. But the black babies that are killed in the abortion clinics don't matter, do they? Medical people. Uh, do their lives matter? Does the future of our black babies matter? Huh? What's up? What's up? Awful quiet now, aren't they? Uh-huh. It's okay if we kill them in the womb, right? But you have a problem when we, you don't seem to really have a problem when we kill them on the streets. Yes, when we know they're the same is, issue. If we, don't, if we don't respect the lives of our unborn children enough to save them and fight for them, our lives mean nothing once we're born. It's crazy how they got real quiet when they was talking about babies in the womb. But when the media tells you to go out and protest for Black Lives Matter when one is killed by a police officer, they're ready to fight. But they ain't ready to fight for that little baby in that womb. The Bible says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. You are basically killing off a person that the Lord formed in the belly. Man, oh man. These next two clips, next two, three clips, is about the presidential candidates. And their stance on abortion. And I don't see how anybody could go for a guy like Biden and K K Kamala Harris. It don't make sense. These people are for abortion at any term. Late term, early term, mid term, whatever. And I'm not telling you who to vote for or anything like that. But if you are a believer and you're taking this stance and you're trying to look at Who's who and who's for for who? You be the judge. I support 
a woman's right to choose. I support it's a constitutional right. I've supported it. I will continue to support it. And I will, in fact, move as president to see to that the Congress legislates that that is the law. A lot of people here care about economics. They also care about social issues. Where are you now on the question of if abortion should be illegal and whether same-sex marriages should be allowed? Well, I'm pro-life. And uh, I have well, What does that mean to you? Well, it means it's, it's an issue. I mean, it is an issue, and it's a strong issue. And as far as... Uh, as far as same-sex marriage, I am for traditional marriage, but it seems that that's really becoming the state's right issue, and probably the Supreme Court at some point is going to be making a ruling so on that. So abortion, you know, at some point they should be making abortion, a even in pregnancy, early in a pregnancy, is murder to you. No, what I'm saying is this: with caveats, uh, life of the mother, mm -hmm. uh, incest, rape. And that's where I stand, and it's uh, so I'm pro-life, but with the caveats, and you have to have with with the caveats. Right. So it's uh, pro-life, you know, just because first time, it's the first time you've asked me this question. Uh -huh. Well, that's and it's a lot of people here care right. about the issue. That's right. So it's pro-life, mm -hmm. right? But it's uh, life of the mother, very important incest and, and uh, rape. Okay. U.S. presidential nominees Donald Trump and Joe Biden are promising dramatically different abortion-related policy goals if elected president next week. In a letter to pro-life leaders last month, President Trump said if re-elected, he will continue the transformation of the federal judiciary with judges who do not legislate an abortion agenda from the bench overcome the Democratic filibuster in Congress to pass pro-life laws like the pain-capable Unborn Child Protection Act and the No Taxpayer Funding for Abortion Act. Trump also promised to fully defund the big abortion industry, such as Planned Parenthood, of our tax dollars. Meanwhile, on the campaign trail, Democratic nominee Joe Biden has vowed to codify Roe v. Wade, restore federal funding for Planned Parenthood, restore the Affordable Care Act's contraception mandate, and rescind the Mexico City policy, which stops U.S. taxpayer funding of the abortion industry overseas. Like I said, I'm not telling you who to vote for. That's a subject for a different day. But just going off that topic alone, who would you side with? The Bible says here, I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. From inside the womb, God is his God, Jesus Christ. And you're willing to kill that off. Shame on you. And then we got this guy, Lecrae. I'm trying to tell y'all, he's not a Christian. He's one of them phony ones. But this is what he said. What if the Christians who want to reduce the number of abortions supported funding health care for women? dealt with the systemic racism that creates poverty for women of color and addressed the income gap between white people and people of color. Well, how about we start with fornication first? Let's see what we could do about that. Because 9 out of 10 times, a true godly marriage is going to have a husband that's going to provide them things that you talked about and this little comment that you posted. But talk about fornication first. That's the key to stopping abortion. Let's get to, let's get to life. Um, in 50 years, there's, 20, there's been 22 million, over 22 million, 500,000 black people aborted mm. strategically and on purpose. Planned Parenthood was set up and placed in minority communities to kill black people. You're talking about um, when Margaret Sanger, the originator of Planned Parenthood at the time, because a lot of people, when when you say things like that, to in their defense, they say, well, Planned Parenthood today is a different organization. But the but what you do, 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 do. Hey, here we go. But what Margaret you cannot Sanger. deny is these facts that Ye is about to give you right now. Here we go. Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, was an avowed racist whose goal was to reduce the black population in America, and she succeeded. 80% of abortion clinics in America are are in minority neighborhoods. Over 22,500,000 black babies have been aborted in 50 years. 
over 1,000 black babies are aborted every day. So that means we are inside of it as we speak. This is genocide. So wait, we so are that, inside of genocide so as people, we speak. What about the people that are going to argue and, and say, but you know, Kanye doesn't have the right to speak on that uh, because he's not a woman. Uh, the fact that Planned Parenthood does a lot of amazing things and they're in those communities because they need to be in those communities. Well, I have to go to the word. God says He knew you before you were in the womb. Yup, Jeremiah one five. Yeah. So <laughs> I got a one one other statistic. Abortion is the number one killer of black lives in the United States, according to the Centers for Disease Control CDC. and Prevention. Mm -hmm. Abortion kills more black people than HIV, homicide, diabetes, accidents, cancer, and heart disease. Watch this one. Combined. combined. Look at the stats. They don't lie. In the black community, the black women are leading in abortions. I believe Hispanics were next. And they put these Planned Parenthood in the neighborhood, but Black Lives Matter won't go over there and lift a finger to stop them. I'm here to tell y'all, the only way to stop this is getting back to God's word. See what he says about fornication. See what he says about marriage. Sex before marriage, he don't go along with that. And when you're killing off a baby, it's a baby. I'm trying to tell y'all, but y'all don't want to listen to that. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. This was at six months. So what do you think at one month? It wasn't a baby at that time? This is at six months, and the baby was already jumping. The only way to get this right is to obey the Lord Jesus Christ. If you can't do that, and if this offended you, you need to check your spirit. Like I said, the world's going to do what it's going to do. But in the believers, the believers in Christ, the followers of Christ, and you're saying it's okay to commit this stuff, you're in the wrong. Last verse, for thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. And what stage is that? That's that conception. I pray that this video was edifying. I pray that we all repent from this stuff. And we see how God wants us to be. Not according to the way the world wants us to be.